There, I can hear you now. Okay. Hello. Go. Oh, hello, my friend. <laughs> it's Number been one, an observation. So I wrote down in my book. I mean, it's just simple, but I'm very. I write down. It's October fifteenth, two thousand and twenty. Elijah, you add up those numbers. It's eleven. One plus one equals two. <gasps> oh. <laughs> and inside the book I grab is something that Lorianne had done. So I think Lorianne's with us in spirit. Well, of course she is. She uh, probably has a big smile on right now and they're wondering, geez, why are these guys going to get going? <laughs> and you know what the page says? Ignite the engaged. Ignite the engaged. What does that mean? No, ignite the engaged. Okay, I got that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <gasps> it's time, Elijah. It seems to be. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I put out a podcast this morning. That... Cool, I saw, but I didn't have a chance to listen to it. Okay, I would suggest to listen to because I think if I had, if I had just one video to send to the world, yeah, that was it. This is this is the beginning. This is like okay, I don't know why or how or why the stars align because Mercury supposedly just went retrograde, but I mm -hmm. feel as if things are about to begin, and here we are chatting, and this is you're the follow up to my entry into the world. Of and you know what the funny thing is is we we just there's times when you and I we just click we click. When the time is right, we click. There's no like, oh, it can't work for me. This doesn't work for me. There's no getting worked up over everything. We're allowing the universe to serve us. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? So tell me what's happening in your world. There must be like, I, I'm very excited to hear. So what I'm doing, um, last night we hosted a Dare to Be You. We're doing a series, like, I'm still in my business, right? Like I'm here for one year, but I now have a team of people I can work with. So it takes some responsibility off me. I, they want me here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So three days a week, I see clients, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not running everyday business stuff. Okay, what kind of um, business? Give it a little context to someone who doesn't know anything so about with you. my investment firm. Okay. With my investment firm. Okay. Um, it has how, long, how long have you been doing this? Uh, just started September 1st. No, or your investment firm. My firm is 26 years old. Okay, 26 years old. Yeah. In, uh, where where are you? I'm in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Yorkton, Saskatchewan. And I've run my firm for 26 years as a woman in financial services. Okay. And um, I've teamed up with a group, a, t a business group out of uh, Saskatoon as part of my succession plan going forward so that I'm able to step into my total life purpose and be taking this value system and the inflow matrix out to the world, Elijah, with you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where I am. So, and I turned 60 in December. On December 14th, I turned 60 and I've never felt more enlightened in my life because I think for me, it's like, oh my gosh, we've lived life experiences. We've lived through what life brings to us, good, bad, ugly, whatever it be. And we survive through it. We grow through it. Through it. And here I am now ready to teach the world. Wow. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> it only took 60 years to get ready. I know. I know. But you know, we're doing a dare to be you. So my friend, Carrie... She's a principal in Regina in the education system. And she, uh, she's doing the Dare to Be You series with me. So last night, it's a series of four, four events, and they're in the learning center. But it's also last night it came up that Yorkton has kind of got COVID. So it's like, well, you know, we got to be a little more cautious. People didn't want to come in because whatever. So we, we offered it via Zoom, but only to the people that were already registered. But this was what was really cool. So I was the in-class person. So I did my presentation in person. Um, Carrie did hers from Zoom from Regina. And then we had her, um, another lady, I guess she does what's called family constellation work. 
Yeah. Her name is Kali. She came in as our guest speaker. And it was all, the topic was relationships. So Carrie was, her business is authentically you. She talked about your relationship with yourself. Lori Renton stepped in and then I did relationship with others. Uh -huh. So I used one of the maps from way back from the conscious school of conscious communication. I yeah. found that map, Elijah. Right. And I use that map as my tool for people to, and we went into each of the relationships, kind of what does it mean? And then my exercise was, you looked at the map, you picked one of the relationships and you took a recipe card and you wrote down a little bit about that relationship. And then they went to a table that had the values cards on them. And the values cards uh, were, were divinely planned. And as I said to everybody, if we don't do it divinely for this, we won't have time. Right. This is just a little taste of what we can do. So we want you to go around that table, think of that person, put the intention out there for what value will show up for the relationship that you're thinking about. You would not believe the stories people had to tell. Like it was, I talked to a lady today. She phoned me. She goes, that is one of the best things. Thank you so much for bringing this to our community. And she said her relationship was with her daughter. And she's always felt that her daughter doesn't quite appreciate her mom as much as I think her mom would like, right? So is that a reflection? What is that? You know what I asked her? What card did you pull last night? She was one of our Zoom people. She says integration. She goes, Lori, I Googled the word. I looked it up. And she says, it says the practice of uniting people. She says, oh my gosh, all I could think of was with my daughter was the connection that I want to build with her and I pull integration. I said, Sheila, these cards work all the time. <laughs> so I use that and also I use, when I went through the relationships, I also showed, and I know, um, Elijah, you know the Enneagram um, in personalities, I put the circle up with the seven me the enthusiast and i showed my stress line and my growth line and i said talk about this my life partner is type one my stress line my key employee in my business is a type one another person i work with closely is a type one i go what the hell are these type ones doing in my life but they have made me probably grow the most as my type seven but another thing I shared with them was showing my growth line. And I said, just because it says growth, is that really the part of you, the personality part of you that you go to for growth? I said, I've had this idea of this learning center for 16 years in my mind, in my heart, my mind and my heart. <coughs> and I said, 16 years later, I realized it wasn't my stress line that was stopping me from doing this because I'm going, oh, it's got to be just right. I'm not taking this out to the world until I have it just right. Because how am I going to look if it's not? Well, Elijah, how do we take anything out there if we don't start and improve it as we go? So, but I realized that wasn't what was stopping me. What was stopping me was my growth line. And my growth line is the five, the investigator. And it's, I need more knowledge. I need to learn more. I need to do more training to get better at doing this before I take it to the world. That's what was halting me, was my growth line. Oh. I have enough knowledge. I have enough training that I've done with all things. There's enough tools in the toolbox. Right. So, so what we're, just to go back to give context into what you said about the map you were using, uh, can you show the map or maybe speak about your, you're talking about the six meta conversations, right? The uh, social field, the family field, the friendship field, the intimate field, the uh, service field. Can I show the map? I'm just going to grab it. It's on my table. Okay. I'm just going to the learning center to get me one, but using these cards, these values cards with, with the, um, values map was powerful. And I know there's a lot more to that map, um, Elijah, and she'll bring me a copy shortly. There's a lot more to it. I think it showed, what was it, five or six personalities, like five or six um, relationships, right? Yeah. Volunteer, family, business, friends. 
social and intimate. Social and intimate. So yeah. I went through each of those briefly, and then it's also got the observer, the listener, and the speaker and the false speaker. self. Yeah. And the false self. And, yeah. But I didn't go into that. Okay. I just was talking about external relationships that we have in our lives just to get people slowly, you know, that one step at a time. Yeah. So uh, I've done that map in a bigger way where we've actually done groups of three and one was the observer, one was the speaker, one was the listener. Oh, it wow. was powerful. Oh, wow. Lorianne did that one years ago with us. Okay. Yeah, there was about a group of 10 people in that one. So that was good. I, I found though, so we did that map. And what I'm seeing is people need a little bit more, a little bit more. You know, when you go to a motivational speaker, Elijah, and you walk out of this big room where they've had this speaker and you're all pumped up and then it's like, now what? Like, I'm fortunate. My personality type is I can take this. I can do this. I can, I can put this into my practice. Not a lot of people know how to do that. Right. So if we do these mini series and keep people engaged, guess what? They're all going to shine and illuminate through this. Right. So, you know, ignite the engaged. So what I want to do is I want to work with people that want to be engaged. Cause I used to go, Oh man, that person needs that. Oh, come on, come on. And I'm pulling them. Right. I'm not doing that anymore. Elijah. I'm going, are you ready? I'm here. Are you ready? Right. Elijah and I are here. We're ready for everybody that wants to be ready. So igniting the engaged to me is key. And then as you told me with the, this map is designing your ideal job. Can you imagine uh, whether you're in an existing role in a company or a job that you want to enhance or whether you want to step right out and become an entrepreneur? How do you design that ideal job? That's exciting because I think right now on the planet is our life's meaning, our life's purpose, our healing through relationships is key. Two of my buddies are pastors and they even said, rather than it being the word religion, why can't they change the word religion to relationship? Like that's brilliant because it just it's just got a different context for so many people. I was just looking to see if I have my book here. Right here. My good friend, the masterpiece within, my good friend Guy Schultz. Uh-huh. He's a type four in the Enneagram, the same as my friend Elijah. And we're writing a book. So we're, we're incorporating, thank you, Sylvia. You want to say hi? <laughs> we're recording. Hey, you. Oh, good. Awesome. Oh, I like your background. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you print me off that map? I sent it to you by mistake. Oh, thank you. Hi, Sylvia. Okay, so um, I was telling you about this. I'll finish this story first. Okay. So Guy wrote this book, him and Claudia. Claudia is married to a, she's in Nashville and she's model singing and her husband's um, a singer. And I came across Guy because his dad was a Blue Cross client. And when Guy came from Calgary, they grew up just outside Yorkton. And his dad said, you need to go meet Lori Renton. It was almost like it was out of the blue. And we met, well, he's got a curling story. He writes for curling. He writes for tennis. He's a writer. And we have become fabulous friends. He now lives in Regina. This book is Life Skill 1 is Choosing Wisely. Life Skill 2, Becoming the Hero of Your Own Story. Life Skill 3, Discovering and Developing Life Bliss. Life Skill 4, Balancing Emotions, Mind, Spirit, and Body. Life Skill 5, Making a Difference. So I feel when I read this book, and in this book it's got at the end of every chapter, you can do little exercises. So I said to Guy, I said, will you write a book with me? And I didn't even know if he would just be helping me write it because he's a writer or if he would co-author it with me. We've determined that we're co-authoring it. Okay. So it might take a year, it might take two years. We don't know yet. But what's, the, what's the title of the book? This one is called, the Ma this one is the masterpiece within. Um, our book, we haven't come up with the title yet. Okay. It's going to be something to do with teams. Okay. Like, have you ever read, um, 
The Sacred Hoop? No. So the Sacred Hoop is written by a guy that he played football, but he or basketball, but he also coached uh, Michael Jordan. Okay. Uh, and he used a lot of the Lakota Indian model, like the Lakotas. Yeah. They were connected to the Lakotas. And he used a lot of their philosophy to bring into team building. And I go, oh my gosh, I thought of you, Elijah. Let's bring the inflow matrix into team building within organizations so that we can be the change we want to see in the world of business. Right. So business, because I look at my company, 26 years old, this business didn't grow just because of me. Yeah, I let it. But guess what? It's about the healthy, the health, the healthy side, mind, body, and spirit of the team of people within it. So by being able to use the values cards, use my points of view training, and build the people within the organization, that only makes a company flourish. Right. So, so here's my map. Okay. Can you put it up? It. Yeah, just maybe bring it up and hold it there for a sec. Um, yeah. Just pull it back a little bit. Okay. And just right there. So we've got intimate, family, friendship, business, volunteer, which now is service, and social. So we've got six different fields, and then we have an observer, a listener, a speaker, and at the bottom, a false self, which we can't see. And at the top, you put primary intention and the date, and it says an inflow matrix map. And could, could you move it a little bit closer, and what's the center point? The uh, inner dialogue. Internal dialogue, right, right. Okay, well, that's, that's a good map. That's a, that's a good map. Spectacular map, and I remember when Lorianne was still alive years ago, we went and did a little trade show, and she sat at a round table doing this map with people, and I sat at another table doing Enneagram personality work. Well, we had lineups of people wanting to sit down. Because you don't even, honestly, Elijah, people don't even think about this stuff until you bring it to them in, a, in the way that we're able to you're able to bring it out to people through these values cards and stuff it gives people a totally different perspective they're looking at something through a different lens right so that That's was kind of fun so i just happened to come across this map and my topic was relationships to others <laughs> So like I tell everybody now that I mentor and coach, I, don't, I mean, I don't have a ton of people, but I guess I'm a teacher and a coach every day of my life. I say to them, watch out what you wish for because the universe will bring it to you. Right. Could you put the right. map up just up a little sure. bit more? I just want to. Um, Is it good? Yeah. Um, business. I'm just seeing the placement because I think I place them in different places now. Okay, I mean, this, well, that's this okay. is a, so this is an old map coming back in. I'll make it again and sort of update it to the okay. uh, current situation. And, okay. and you know what I was going to say? It says conscious communications values map, but I would really put something to do with relationships in here because that's a big topic. Yeah, because those, those are the six meta conversations. Okay. okay. Oh. Okay, because your card set of 72 is actually the breakdown of the business. Those are the oh. business conversations. And this is the, oh. this is like the, the, the top map. Okay, I see. Okay, well, that makes sense now that you say that. But it sure that, did. Sorry? It served last night with the topic of relationships. Well, what's nice, it, it has, it may seem complicated, but it's actually, it's quite a simple map, right? It's. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I find. And if it was a bigger group, or even if um, when we start doing this online, what we can do is we can do breakout groups of three. Right. And then and they're able to pull a values card and have the conversation as one being the listener. That's what I see happening because we, this virtual classroom is going to have to be a big, big deal. We will always have physical space because I still say the human connection and being person to person is totally different. Right. But we'll, we want to be able to accommodate both. Okay. Yeah. And so what did you do? You, you, you got them to, everyone had a map and they all got to choose the values? 
Yeah. They, they were write actually... down an, an intention. Okay. With the relation, first they picked the relationship, and then the person. I said you don't have to put the person's name on if you don't want, but just okay. have it in your own mind. And whether okay. it's daughter, sister, brother, friend, business part, business work, coworker. Um, and then they picked the spot, and then they went to the table, and all these values cards. How many are there, Elijah? Ninety-six. Yeah, around hundred. Yeah, so a hundred cards sitting on the table, with upside down. So they walked around the table with thinking of their intention and the relationship they wanted kind of the value to pull out for and not a person said this doesn't make sense everybody goes wow so we went around the table because we had a little bit of time limit but we went around the table and had everybody just tell what their value was and did it seem to fit the relationship intention that they had put out there and not a soul said no it didn't they went wow Right. So that gave me that gave me a tool. Am I using it to its maximum ability? Of course I'm not. But again, in our in our learning center, our Dare to Be You series is to give you snippets because we always try to look at a big picture rather than just little bit, little bit, little bit. Right. And then that way we can build from it because then we're starting to see relationships is a hot topic for people. Right. We're going to really build on relationships and right. stuff like that. So we'll design a program just for relationships as part of the series. For so, sure. I mean, the goal is, Elijah, really, is to say, okay, this is small. It costs you $30 to come to this. But we want it to be bigger and have you on board for a year, two years, three years. Right. And um, sell bigger programs right. that are going to change your life. For sure. Yeah. So, so, you, so you just did one thing. You took one card from the values deck put it on one map and that was it and that was one that was enough that was a big thing that was it that was one thing so i said to people i said we do a whole values mapping system this right. is a tiny little piece of what so it's to say to people oh my gosh this is powerful i want to do a whole map right by myself or as a group that's right. what the goal is, right? Well, of course, that's the next step to Yeah. And as you know me, I'm a connector. Right. So that's so, kind of what I did. So what's going on with your cash flow program? Okay, so the clash, cash flow, the discovery process, I'm just working on building it to systematize it. And it's through the cash flow planning group. I pay for back office, of course. And now they've got an app called Winton that I can invite people to Winton to be able to track their income and their expenses and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Honestly, Elijah, I just haven't, because of the transition that was going on in my business, I haven't focused on it totally. Okay. But I really believe that I'm going to use that tool for people's relationship around money. Right. That's because what that one's for because, again, you can tell I love books. So money from fear to love, uh, using the Enneagram to create wealth, prosperity, and then love. Oh, so wow. Margaret Smith is an amazing woman that has taken the world of money and the Enneagram and brought it together. So like, I want to start showing her some of these maps and stuff. Like she, her goal is to make her own personality test that's 100% good. And then to um, take it out to financial advisors. Oh. Whereas my, what I want to do is take it out to the common people so they can step into their power around money. Right. That's my, that's more my goal. So can her and I work together to create something? We'll see. Well, I mean, you've been in the financial services market for, as you said, 26 years and you've been oh, working in, in the realm of money. Uh, tell me a little bit about the transition you're doing here from okay. sort of more of a financial approach into more of a personal development approach. Right, right. So I've been in the business since 87. So I've really been in the business for 34 years. I've owned my own business for 26 years. So um, years ago, and this is, this is so true. Like, have you ever felt Elijah 
that you're not living your full purpose in life. Uh, just like, a teeny weeny bit. <laughs> yeah, teeny weeny bit. So my mom passed away 15 years ago. She was 62 years old. So I, I watched her go through her death. I transitioned, you know, as she transitioned and left this planet, I was there with her. And I thought to myself, oh, really? Is that what life's about? Just to all of a sudden you're just gone just like that. And it's like you were the tip of this pen on this planet. And I go, I am going to be making a difference. So I sat here in my office and if you can see, I have, you've never been here. And I sat in this space and after she had passed and I'm sitting here and I'm going, now what, Lori? You know, now people, stock markets go up and down. I'm a financial advisor. People react to money and react to money markets going up and down. We have no control over that. So I go, but what I could do is I could become a life coach, incorporate that into my practice and start teaching people and working with them with their emotions around money. So then I connected in with the Enneagram 12 years ago. I did the training with Russ Hudson and um, Don Riso, and it was the very last course that Don had ever taught, and he died right after that. So what a good fortune that I was able to meet that man. He was, he's the one that brought the world of personality to the Enneagram. I did that training, and then when it was the week was over, I went to Russ and I said, Russ, I said, how can I incorporate this? Because I don't want to go out there and take something brand new. I want to take what I'm doing and how can I enhance it to serve the world? And he goes, you need to talk to Dr. Margaret Smith. She works with money in the Enneagram, blah, blah. And I go, oh my gosh. So of course, Lori gets online and Margaret Smith's got something happening in San Francisco. So I flew down and there were eight of us in her class. Um, the, from the people from the Philippines, from Russia, Australia, myself, US, there were eight of us, a nine of us. Every Enneagram type was there. No. Talk about a coincidence. Uh -huh. Every Enneagram type. It wasn't like there was two, well, the teacher, Margaret, and myself were both sevens, but she's a seven with a six wing, I'm a seven with an eight wing. Gives us a quite a bit different perspective. So. Anyway, I go through this class with her and it wasn't even about money. It was just, you know, um, more about our personalities and how we work. We had to do a play. She gave us hours to work on a play and we had to go through every personality type, but we had to decide what the play was gonna be. And we used the Wizard of Oz. We used that theme and the seven, okay? She put felt pens and everything. The seven grabs all the felt pens and grab the paper and sits down on the floor and I'm ready to draw. What are we doing? Everybody gathers around me except for one person. They stand behind a chair observing. And it was really weird. We go, we're going to do the Wizard of Oz. So we described it. I drew the yellow brick road. <laughs> I'm drawing the yellow brick road and I'm putting all this stuff on the road and there's the scarecrow and the tin man and all of a sudden something clicked for the gentleman behind the chair and he left from behind the chair elijah he came walking around and he sat in this circle and do you know i almost have tears right now because when he showed up his personality was a six the six personality is very much about they will look ahead and see what obstacles could be there to be prepared well, a seven doesn't do that. Let's go on a road trip. Who cares if nothing's open? Let's sleep in the car. As soon as he showed up to my one side, I felt relief. I don't, I, it's, it's, I can't explain it, but it was something after that I was able to explain to Margaret that it was weird how it was like he was left out over there, but yet when he came in, it was like he filled the void in the group of people. So we created, we created um, the Wizard of Oz. So we had to create a place. So we we're all part of it. And we went through all the personalities to create this play to take you through all the different journeys on this. It was one of the most experiential things I've ever done in my life. And we all, our entire group, still stay connected. All of us. 
and a couple of them are doing major Enneagram training in Bangkok, all over the world. Wow. The eight, the eight right. personality, which is the challenger, which really is about getting out there and taking action. That's right. my wing. Um, she's doing amazing stuff right now in Bangkok. Huh. So, so that, so when we go and say, well, how did you, Lori, shift from, you know, I don't want to make this lightly because this isn't fair, but just being a financial advisor right. to taking it to the whole realm of taking the nine points and creating, and this was Margaret Smith. She goes, you go around the points and you go, number one, if you think of the personality of one being the perfectionist, one on the discovery process map I use is accounting. How well do you keep track of your money? Two, how in tuned are you to your spending? Three, how well, um, how well are you earning money to your greatest potential? So when I think of three and I think of how well are you earning money to your potential, I thought of this designing your ideal job because Elijah, it's not always about the P R O F I T in business. It's about the P R O P H E T profit and profit needs to come together. We know we need profit to run business, but we also need to incorporate more profit into business. So I go, the three, are you earning money to your greatest potential? You're going to a job every day, you're making a hundred grand a year, you freaking hate it. You leave the end of the day, you're feeling sick to your stomach, you don't like the people around there, all this stuff is going on, whoop tee do. You're making 30 grand a year or 40 grand a year, you're excited in the morning to go to work, to hang out with those people because you're getting personal development and you're growing as a human being within a company. Really? So those are the kind of things because I wasn't somebody that was brought up with a bunch of money. I'm not a trust fund baby. I'm not any of that. I just have a common sense for saying we can all step into our power and not have to be feeling so dis eased over money it's all it is is it's another tool so i go except that it just seems so damn important but years ago one of my friends is a medicine man here in yorkton he travels he's he's like a guy you couldn't even connect with him to phone him and say could you come and visit me i just have to think where's alvin i haven't seen him for a while guess who shows up at my office alvin so he brought his sister here one day elijah and she's I don't know, she lives out of Yorkton. She walked in the front door. I'd never seen this woman in my life. And she looks at me and she goes, you're a healer. Well, my ego kind of went, are you kidding me? I'm a financial advisor. And all of a sudden I go, oh my gosh, I'm helping people heal through their journey with money. Ah, oh, that totally made sense. And then she says, and you're a drummer. There's something about a beat. You can hold a beat. And I go, I wanted to be a drummer as a kid. Like, I love that kind of stuff, right? So all these little things through my life are starting to wake me up going, okay, I'm introduced to the Enneagram. When I hear about it, I get shivers in my body. When I was in grade three, my parents had split up for a short time. And my dad brought me a birthday present. And birthdays are birthdays. I don't remember all my presents. I opened up my present. And guess what it was? It was a game called Anagrams. It stuck with me to this day. I can remember that like it was yesterday. Anagrams. Grade three, I was getting my first connection into the Enneagram. Not really understanding it, right. but now that I'm growing up, I'm looking at all the phases of what has happened to see how... Um, it's really, it, it's a part of my life and I believe it's an ancient, ancient tool, but I believe that it is something that is going to heal humanity. So then I meet Elijah. Thank you. I meet Elijah and he's got this inflow matrix and these nine points and all this stuff that just enhances. It's the Enneagram, 
brought into business, brought into family relationships, brought into the inner you, the outer you, the inner group, the outer group. So when 2011, when I did a map with my team and Lorianne facilitated that and we built a map, um, some of the values that came up for us as a team, which is really cool in the role at the top of the nine, which is the steward. I'm the steward of this ship here at All Our Future and you're the steward of your own life. Um, is authenticity. That's the card that showed up. Out of 100 cards, we did a meditation and we chose a card divinely and we picked authenticity. So it's just, I, I am living like what I feel with the Enneagram, the inflow matrix and the work that we're doing. It's a living, breathing system. It's not something you build a business plan and it sits on a shelf. It's living and breathing every single day because of the different connections that we have in relationship with people in life circumstance. Like the Enneagram, when you look at one, four, two, eight, five, seven, and you look at personality, you go, we are in transformation every minute, every hour, every day of our lives. We're in transformation in our personalities. We're not the same person we were at the end of the day yesterday. We're different today because we're transforming into our whole authentic selves. Uh, if we allow it. Mm. So Elijah, like I said, I know that we, we are here to ignite the engaged. There's going to people going, oh, that's fluffy. That's crap. That, so be it. That's okay. Let's embrace and engage and empower the ones that want to come forward because this is the time on the planet. If ever there was a bridge to be built and get over it is now. I, I just saw a meme saying there's a hundred million unemployed um, as a result of COVID. So it's incredible. Like the, the, the world has come to a, a stop. And now the new paradigm is, is ready to come into the world. And uh, what better way than to design your ideal job into it and to figure out, you know, how you can co-create with all the other people who want to build a whole new economy, right? You know, I love, I love that everything about you, Elijah, everything about you is co, co. We're not here as one person or one whatever to do things. We're here to co-create in humanity something that's going to, change the world and look at my mug <laughs> <laughs> well it, and it's interesting that uh healthcare came out of saskatchewan right and, mm -hmm. and york, york and saskatchewan is <clears throat> tell me a little bit more about york and in, in relationship to the rest of saskatchewan okay or the rest of the world yeah <laughs> like so yorkton is in um the eastern side of the province we have regina more south we have Saskatoon, and when you actually look at it, you go, okay, there's Saskatoon, there's Regina, there's Regina, there's Yorkton. Kind of builds a triangle. Okay. So Yorkton is the third largest trading area in the province. We are 20,000 people. Like, I'm just giving, like, for those of you that listen and, and are looking at facts, I don't have the exact numbers, but we're about 20,000 people in our community. But we expand an hour outside our community, we become 200,000. Okay. So I sat on economic development um, with our city for quite a few years. And I said, let's brag about that. Let's awaken the sleeping giant called Yorkton and embrace the whole area and make us shine in this province. So Yorkton has had things start here or things that happen here. Like I'm just gonna grab something. So Yorkton, we really are based in agriculture. Like we really are. Like, and we we started an event in the back alley called Rally in the Alley, and it was called Food, Farm, Family, and Fun. How do we bring the families together, honor the farmers for the food they grow us so that we can have fun? And it was called Rally in the Alley. Because everybody's always afraid of back alleys. Oh, what happens in a back alley? Don't go down that alley. You might get mugged. It's between two bars and people are walking back there. And I'm going, are you kidding me? We're out in the back alley and our alley's like a T. Kind of like 
this and we're out, I'm out the back alley one day and there's a guy across the way, there's another guy across the other way and we're having a conversation, a three-way conversation. I go, we need to do a party in this alley. So we ended up having this party. We did it for three years and then of course this year it went on hold because of COVID. So um, those are just the kind of things that Yorkton has really embrace like just bringing you know the world-class curling to Yorkton we've got fabulous people like I think Saskatchewan what we really have going for us are the people of Saskatchewan and I I want to read you this gentleman here this magazine can you see it mm -hmm. so it's called the industry west business in the time of COVID and beyond so this gentleman right here Grant Cook he is a blessed soul all the rest of the people on there, this is his key assistant, Wanda, and the rest of them are CEOs of Saskatchewan companies. Okay. So they run what's called West Cap Management. So let's say there's a story of prairie meats out of Regina. Like this is just a little bit, again, about Saskatchewan. Prairie meats in Regina, two brothers owned it. They grew this beautiful little business, but then all of a sudden one brother got cancer. Well, West Cap Management goes in and they bought it, but they kept the other brother as a manager. So they're there to say, okay, all these baby boomers now have grown these companies in Saskatchewan. Now, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna succession them? And they come in and they'll buy, and then their people sit on the board of directors, so they're continually investing back in the province. Because they do that, it's called what's a labor-sponsored fund, so all you can spend is five grand. If you buy a $5,000 RSP, you get a deduction, but the federal and provincial government give you an extra tax break because you're investing back in the province you live in. Oh. So talk about powerful, and that's Grant Cook that started that. So here's his, here's his quote, and this, this really fits Saskatchewan. So they did a virtual meeting, and it was cool because Wanda, she facilitated and then she spoke to all these CEOs. And it's on, it's on a video, Elijah, I'll send it to you. Okay. And Grant Cook says, fundamentally, we will keep investing in these leading Saskatchewan companies due to the work ethic and the culture of our people, which has never changed. Mm. And I go, holy, that's empowering. He's one of the most amazing men I've met. And, and what's funny is, I've been working with them for 21 years now and they're just a piece of what I do. And I hired a girl one time and she's working out front in my office and we're talking about golden opportunities. All of a sudden, Elijah, one day she goes, my uncle has something to do with that company. That's her uncle, uh -huh. Grant Cook, that started it. And I'm going, like, are you kidding me? So, so there's amazing stuff. So with Yorkton, Saskatoon, Regina, and these guys are out of Saskatoon. And when you look at, Alberta and you look at Edmonton, Calgary, you look at Saskatchewan, you look at Saskatoon, Regina. Regina, Edmonton are the government cities and then Calgary and Saskatoon are more the entrepreneurial communities. Well, Yorkton doesn't have the government. I got these little branches, but we are very entrepreneurship. We're very entrepreneurial and we're very much about building community. Mm. So again, it's 20,000 people there's a place in BC, it's a winery, it's called Nipponick, Nip, Nip, Nipponick, something like that. The top winemaker in Canada, and he's from Nipponick, he's a Yorkton guy. Uh -huh. And when they wrote the story, they said, um, Randy's from a little town in Saskatchewan. I go, are you freaking kidding me? So I said to the guys on council, we have our, our elections coming up. I said to the guys on council, I said, you guys, Let's take this, awaken the sleeping giant, and become the big little town. Let's become that big little town. Maybe the third largest trading area sounds boring because that's old. Mm. And they often didn't want to take on that title because is it the fact? Are we truly the large, third largest trading area? Mm. Brother, just own it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... So I, have a question. I, have a, I have a question. We did a little bit of training a few months ago. Did something come out of that that is uh, 
maybe a seed popping through the ground right now, perhaps? Well, you know, I would say yes. Like, like Kaylee, one of the young girls, she was on the other group, not in my group, but she was in the other group. And she, you know what she said to me? She goes, Lori, I'm realizing how much that mapping we did with Elijah is impacting my life right now. Uh -huh. She said, it's, it's powerful. So she's, she started her own little business called The Loft, Life right. Opportunities for Thriving. She's right. 19 years old. Right. He's an Edwards School of Business student, but now the university kids, I hired her for the summer and I've been mentoring her. She's type six in the Enneagram, which means they have a lot of worry and anxiety if they're not healthy and don't have control of it. And she has blossomed this young girl. So she wants to start her own company and she's already started the loft. Oh, she's wow. our MC for our events. When we host our events at the Learning Center, right. she's our MC. So I saw what it's done for her. Then the other lady that was in that group as well, Marie, she didn't get to a lot of classes because I think she was quite busy. She works at the city of Melville. She's running for mayor. Wow. She's running for mayor. Like, and then our group was more, we picked four people from the learning center. Right. And we just randomly chose four people while Sylvia and I were taking that learning center to a whole new realm. We know right. it's just gonna, we, we've set it up as a cooperative. So we want the learning center to be the hub. And then we want to say to entrepreneurs out there and people that want to do stuff and have gifts to shine in the world, instead of everybody having to start their own website and their own everything, we funnel it through this hub, the learning center, and then we take it out to the world in a lot of aspects. So you know you're all part of that, right, Elijah? Yes, I do. And yeah. uh, we had spoken of me coming out there at some point, which might have been around now, but uh, things yeah. have happened in between. Um, yeah. one thing just before we kind of leave off here, I, I know that at some point I, we had, uh, I, I want to, I guess I will apologize because I sort of did a clear, I didn't do a clearing. I, I did, I sent a whole bunch of, uh, conversational killers at you and I was, uh, uh, <laughs> uh and I just wonder if there, is there anything that needs to be cleared from that? Not those. <laughs> no, you know what? I, um. I, 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 here was one of my comments about that to the two young women was we have an understanding. Elijah and I have an understanding and it's like maybe, maybe years ago before all this per growth that I've done in myself, I might've got worked up. No, we sometimes have to go through some of our own growth challenges and I can challenge people. I'm really, really, really good at it. I sometimes want people to challenge me. So I'm going to put it out there for you. Uh, challenge me. Okay. Because I know it needs to get going. And like I said, my growth line, you know, going, I need more information. I need to learn more. I need to learn more. No, I want to take, this is my gift to the world, Elijah, if we can do this. I want to take those four maps, the inner you, outer you, inner group, outer group. I just want to focus on those and create the most amazing, whatever it is, virtually and in a classroom environment with people to help them grow. That's my, that's what I want to do. But okay. now that I've heard design your ideal job, that fits in there as part of, of a, of a, a map off of the key maps. Right. So if you're doing an outer you map and all of a sudden the, their job is coming up, right? Then you go, oh, we've got this map over here. Let's go and design your ideal job. Mm. And I know lots of times it's deeper stuff than the map. I know what the maps do. I know they hit us in the spirit and the soul because our soul knows, but our ego takes over. I realized after having the call with Kali last night, being on our call and doing family constellation healing, there's somebody, if it gets beyond what I want to do for work with people, I can guide them to people like her. Okay. So. Well, maybe the challenge is, maybe what we can do is we can work together on this design the ideal job mm -hmm. and you can be a satellite learning center. Okay and that maybe we can work together in terms of that particular course 
and you could do some offline version and I can do some online version. We can kind of like look at how to integrate because I think, you know, you, you're, you're, you've got so much around the money side. The job is there to make money. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I'd, I'd like to look closer at how we could uh, collaborate on perhaps the course together okay. and uh, each do a sort of portion of it and work together to uh, blend you know, our programs in some manner to create an online course that works. Okay, and design your ideal job. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. Yeah. Design your ideal job. That, that hit me, Elijah. If you noticed when you sent me that map, yeah. My response. Yeah. Because I go, you know, a lot of people are in working in a job where they don't have the freedom that I have or you have to go, yeah, get on at whatever time. Um, you know, they need to be a little more structured, right? Because they're working in that kind of structured environment. So that's why I say if we can design that and say, this is what your commitment is. We get a thing signed saying, I commit to shifting where I am in my job to being the best. Um, I do it all the time with my discovery process. I am now taking charge of my finances. I am no longer looking for excuses. They sign it, I witness it, we date it. We pick three top goals or intentions around money and that's what we work towards. Okay. So if we could do that same type of thing, then yes, it will make a difference for people because you said job, and money linked together because why do we have a job right and money again is profit but job and business is profit is also so giving back in whatever capacity because we understand money flows if you grab money and you hold on to it like this guess what you hold on to sand what happens to it still leaks through right so don't hang on to it like that allow it to flow and that's a lot of hidden beliefs that we need to release in order to do that it's gonna it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm linked in with the body talk lady and uh, i utilize her quite a bit and we just did a group body talk with about 12 people and she did a kind of a, a money thing with a whole group of 12 and then she did her reading as body talk through the group it was powerful her name is laura she's from melfort saskatchewan she was amazing so i'm witnessing all this stuff and i'm going money is just another tool to heal through right instead of my ego going i'm a financial advisor my heart is saying i'm here help here to help you with your emotions around money emotions right energy in motion <laughs> well, I think we're coming to the end of our hour. Uh, why don't we communicate through our little messaging and, and see what the next steps are? Uh, it's been lovely to see you and lovely to hear your enthusiasm and your commitment to your own growth and the uh, growth of all those people around you. It's uh, wonderful to see such a blossoming and to hear that you're uh, uh, on course, yeah. on purpose and uh, ready to bring your gifts to the world in a, in a huge way. And so I- That's I, I, Set, be on purpose. That's, that's what I say to everybody, just be on purpose. And they don't even know what that is. So let's help them, let's engage them. Let's just ignite the engaged Elijah. I, Thank I you very wait. much. I really appreciate you, my friend, for what you're bringing out to the world in such a generous, generosity is one of the highest values I see with you is because, but. People just need to be able to embrace it and engage it, right? Yeah. You're so we're turning it into a model that is going to impact the world. So be the change. Be the change. All right. Blessings. Sending you lots, sending you lots of love, my friend. All right. Have a great bye. week. Okay. Bye.